Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Now my Dragonfly mould I designed for a company called KTC Designs. I will put the link to this product in the description box, so if you look in the bottom right hand corner underneath this video, there's a little grey tick. Click on that, in there will be the description, hopefully I'll remember all the links in. The Dragonfly mould consists of a body and four wings. Then there's a whole dragonfly if you want to use it as a smaller embellishment. Then there's some bulrushes and I'll put in some cobblestones or river rocks. Just if you were doing a diorama or doing something with a pond, then you've got all the elements in. I love dragonflies, so that's important to me. Now, uh, what else we're we using? We're using hearty clay. Hearty clay is actually an air drying, lightweight clay. Um, this is the green. If you're looking at the packet, don't be misled. The colour of the green is not the colour of the packet, it's the colour of the button. There are nine different colours, I believe, in the entire set. And there is a larger white one. And I would recommend if you're going to buy any of the colours, buy the white as well, because you'll need to mute those down a bit because these are really intensive colour wise. Um, if we take a quick look, this was that colour green with a bit of yellow added to it because I wanted almost an apple green for the dragonfly. And this is the white and as you can see it is white white. Now when it comes to the body I do need some sort of infrastructure into it. So I'm using um, 30 gauge white florist wire. It's regularly available on the internet. Um, it does come in paper cover or fabric covered. I tend to use paper covered only because it's more regularly available to me. So it comes in a 14 inch length. So if I cut this in half, that gives me a seven inch length that I'll use to create the infrastructure for the body, which we'll be doing next. If I then take another piece and cut it into four, I'll then have four three and a half inch pieces. And that's what I'll use for the wings. Let's put that to one side. So, as I said, let's start work and build a body. Now, I'm going to be creating, let's turn this over so you can see it, one of these. It's called a T-shaped support. I'm going to be making it in green because I'm hoping it shows up better on video. Although when I use it in the actual dragonfly, I'll be using white. So let's put that to one side. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my piece of florist wire. Now, Head, it, head to me is on the left hand side because I'm right handed or predominantly right handed. I'm going to lay the wire into the mold almost to the end. I'm then going to put a scraper in at the top right in the middle of the head and bend this upwards. Now, if you haven't got a scraper, door key, old credit card, old card, card key for doors on cruise ships or hotels. There you go, any of those will do. So as you can see, that gives me a 90 degree. I'm going to continue the fold. I'm going to pinch that at the end so it's folded. I'm then going to turn the mold around again because I'm right handed. I'm going to put the wire back in the mold and that's where the head is. I'm now going to come to the body, put this scraper where the body is and lift the wire upwards. And what that's done is that's given me a 90 degree stem to this. Now I'm going to spend a few seconds just making sure everything is nice and straight so therefore I've got the infrastructure or the support for the tail and the head of my dragonfly because obviously it's long and thin. So let's put that to one side and as I said before I'm going to be using a white one for actually molding the dragonfly and that's what we're using next. Now as far as the dragonfly goes I'm going to be using the hearty white clay, but I am using white vegetable fat. Now, white vegetable fat for me is either Trex or Crisco, depending on the country you're in. If you don't have access to either of those, you could use a tiny little touch of um, vegetable oil. That would be fine. Try and steer it clear of olive oil, because olive oil can sometimes have a green tint to it. And whenever you use fat in a mold, guys, just go in afterwards, give it a warm, soapy wash. These are food grade, they're high quality. You can even put these molds in the dishwasher. So I'm gonna take the tiniest little bit. You'll hardly even see it on my finger. I'm gonna rub it down into the mold. Now, believe it or not, this isn't there so that it releases. It's there so it holds it in place. I'm then gonna take a little bit of my clay. Now you can always add more clay if you don't have enough clay. You can always take this out and remold it and put it back in again. I like to roll it into a ball and then roll it into a rough sausage shape. I'll then come in from the top end where the head is and I'm using a slight rocking action with my fingers, pushing the clay down till I get to the end. I'll just wipe it away with the pad of my thumb. 
and then I'll spend a little bit more time working my way along to make sure all of the edges of the molded piece are nice and clean. Again, I take away a little bit of the excess. I'll lift this up for you in a second, just so you can get a closer look to see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's tidy that up. So there you go, so it's all up there. So if I was to open this up, you see the sides open. That means I've got all of the edges nice and clean. Just press that down again. Now, obviously put this under something, go put it in a bag so it doesn't dry out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my scraper and I'm going to put a little bit of groove right down the middle. Now I'm not pushing all the way through to cut this. I just want to build a little bit of a channel to sit my wire into. So put that on the side. Now I'm going to take my wire and at this point I'm going to take a little bit of um, PVA glue. Now PVA glue to me is this stuff. Tacky glue, white tacky glue. There are different brands out there, whichever brand you want to use. It's fine with me. I'm going to take a little bit of that out and put it on my mat there, just so I've got easy access to it. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently tap the wire into it. Now I'm not painting it on because I don't want a huge amount of glue on there. When I've done that, now this bit you're not going to see very well because I'm going to have my hand in the way, but I'll move my hand as soon as I can, just so you can see. Right, there you go. I've sat this in. Now if I lift this up, it might fall over, but... I've sat that into the groove. I'm then gonna take, I've got a modeling tool here. It's called a Dresden or a veining tool. You could quite easily use the end of a paintbrush for this, guys. I'm gonna support the wire and I'm gonna push it down so it embeds into the body. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna again, using my modeling tool, I'm gonna to try and fold any excess clay which has been displaced over the sides of the mold and then move it over the top of the wire. So I want the wire embedded. Now at this point, if you did need to more, add more clay, you could easily do that at this point. Just make sure you don't overfill the mold at any point. Let's move that down there because I think that little bit needs covering up. Now, once you think you're almost done, I will then take my scraper or again, a store card and I'll come in and I'll give it a press at the front, a press at the back, and I tend to press both sides because that's just the way I do it. Um, and what this is doing is this is just making sure everything is nice and flush and embedded. Now, take a last little check to make sure there's nothing over the edges of the mold. Because at this point, if you've left little pieces over the edge of the mold, you will actually find that it gives you a ridge. So there you go. It's all embedded. And then what I do is, hello, look at that, is I open it out and out comes the dragonfly body. Now you saw how easy that was and if it didn't work for you that's fine roll it into a ball and do it again. One other thing I like to do before I finish is I gently like to turn the tail up. I do that because I think it adds more attitude or my character to it. So I'm going to put this to one side and I would say if you're going to make dragonflies let this dry for a couple of hours, just to make it sure it's fully dry. When I'm doing dragonflies, I tend to do 10 or 20 at a time, so I'd probably leave it overnight anyway. So we're now gonna work on one of the wings. So bringing this back in. Now, there are two small wings and two large wings, and obviously a left and a right of each. Try and keep track of which ones you're doing. Now, we'll talk about which goes where when we're assembling it, but I'm going to do this wing here for no particular reason. I'm not going to do four wings for you. I'm just going to do one wing because it's the same process all the way along. Again, a little tiny bit of that white vegetable fat into the mold. Um, as I said, this is a quarter length of the white 30 gauge wire. I'm then going to take a piece of my white clay now, when you first do this, you're probably going to put too much clay in each time. But the more off you use this, the more you're going to realize you don't need half as much as you think you need. So same process as before. I make sure it's all nicely in there. I try and make sure I can see all of the edges. Now, the wings on my dragonflies are going to be thicker than they would be in real life. Because to be honest, there isn't anything I can do about that. Okay, if you do want to make these out of resin, you could. I've never made them out of resin, so I can't show you a set. So there you go, I've got that in there. Now I'm gonna take a little bit more of my clay, only a little tiny bit like this, a little bead of it. I'm gonna take my wire, if I can pick it up. I'm gonna dip the end in the glue. 
and then I'm going to thread it into the wire. Now I'm going to move it down probably, I'd say probably about half an inch, and then I'm going to roll it in my fingers just so that it actually grips onto the wire. Now what I'm doing is I could pick the clay up out of the mold and insert the wire into the wing. However, I found with air drying clay, I then end up having fingerprints on the outside. Never attractive for a dragonfly. So once I've got this far, I'm going to then just put a little bit of the glue on the back. Now the air drying clay will stick to itself, but I like some sort of insurance policy. So I've laid that on the back and then I'm going to come in with my scraper and press it down. Now, if you are someone who doesn't like the thought of being able to see this in the back, you could take something else and you could press it on there instead. Something that has a texture, anything you've got to mind. Um, I just, I don't mind because the thing is, if you're looking at the backs of the wings, it usually means the wing, that you've dropped the dragonfly. That's also not a good thing to do. Now, don't lift it up by the wire, open it out and it will come out immediately. There you go. Now, I'm not sure how much detail the camera will pick up using white here, but I think you'll get the idea of it. So again, I would make all four of those and then I would lay them on some kitchen paper or a kitchen towel. This is the stuff I'm talking about. Comes on a roll and it's paper. I usually lay them down and after about an hour, I'll usually turn them over and let them dry from the other side as well. After a while, you can stand them up in something and they dry quite quickly that way as well. So that's how I make the wings. So I've got four of those made already. So we'll talk and look at those in a little while. So what do I need to do next? Next, I need to go back to my dragonfly body. Is this the dry one? There's the dry one. So I don't want to be working on a wet wing because then I'll have a problem with it. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to put some glitter onto the back of here. Now I'm using a fairly coarse glitter here. Um, I would recommend a coarser one for the backs, although if you've got a finer one, it will work equally as well. So I'm just going to open a bit of paper because I do tend to drop things. And once I put it on there, I don't want to waste it, do I? I'm going to bring in my PVA glue again. Now mine is in a little pot purely because I travel a lot and I wanted to make sure that it's easy and convenient for me. I'm going to take, where, where are we doing? We're doing this one. I'm going to take a little bit of the glue and what I'm going to do is work my way around, actually paint the body. I'm only painting this, but I think this bit might be called the thorax, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a botanist or biologist or entomologist or any sort of ist really. I'm just someone who's doing his dragonflies. So I want to put enough on so that it grips when I actually put the um, glitter on there just so that it grips it nicely. So there you go, let's move the glue out of the way. I then come in and obviously just do a little bit of a sprinkle. I don't know how you can do a little bit of a sprinkle with a big pot like that, but there you go. So that will actually give me the glitter on the back. Now, once this is fully dried, I'd probably go in and brush the edges because there's going to be some glitter that's sticking onto the clay but it won't stick if there's no glue. So let's put that to one side for a second, just while I tidy up the decks. Now, the joy of having a folded bit of paper, no waste. Our craft supplies are expensive enough. I don't need to be wasting them as I go along. So next thing I want to do is I'm leaving that dry for a little bit, just while I do the wings, only because if I was to put, um, black paint on there now, then any of the glitter that did move around would end up sticking to it. So I've got my wings here all ready to go. Again, I'm going to bring in my piece of paper. Now, for the wings, I found that this sort of glitter is too coarse. So I tend to use a really fine glitter. Now, a bit of a tip for you. If you can't find fine glitter where you are, look at embossing powders. Now you can't use heat embossing on air dry clay, but if you look at it, as far as I'm concerned, that's just really, really fine glitter. So I will sometimes use that, and I do use that on my wings as well. Um, just don't heat emboss it, you'll be in trouble with that. So I'm gonna take my wings, and what I want to do is I want to give them another bit of dimension. Let's move the glitter to one side. So I want to color them up. I've got a green body, I want to put some sort of green into them as well. So let's just lay down a bit of kitchen paper or kitchen towel. Now to use as dust here, I'm using eyeshadow. 
Now, there are dust food colours out there, there are chalks out there, whatever you wish to use. I'm actually just using these because it's convenient. I know it doesn't need to be food safe, it's not going onto a cake. So I'll lay my wings down on my paper. I do apologise that you're not going to be able to see these very well, but it's white on white, but they'll come to life in a few seconds. I'm then going to take a paintbrush, which I can't find, there you go, just a regular flat paintbrush. Now, I don't want it that intense green. I want to put some yellow on these first. I'm going to hold my wires down, and I'm not going to go all the way to the end of the wing. I'm just going to do the bottom edges of it, because I think they look more delicate, um, more fairy-like, if you actually leave the tips of the wings white. That one needs a little more colour in there. So once I've done that, I'm going to take a little bit of the green. I'm just going to put a hint in here just to give them some life. Now, there's one downside to using dusts on, on wings like this, and that is that the dust could come off onto another project. So if you were someone who actually painted with dusts or pastels, you would know you can actually get a spray that can actually seal stuff. Well, the spray I use is actually just an inexpensive hairspray. I've got this size because it's an easy travel size. It doesn't have to be this brand. It doesn't need to be firm hold. Just an inexpensive hairspray will help set this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all of these four up. Because if I spray them individually, I'll end up wasting them. Now I'm going to do this next bit off camera because I don't want to get hairspray onto my iPad. I'm just going to give them a quick spritz. Okay, that was enough, just a really, really quick spritz. They'll look shiny, but then within a few minutes, they'll go matte again. So let's take this over to one side and remove it from, from harm's way. Those will be dry when I come to use them next. And let's go back now to painting something. Now, I'm going to paint the eyes on my dragonfly black. I like the black wings, uh, black eyes, when I actually designed this mold and made it so that it did have really big protruding eyes. Let's just take some of that spared litter off there. There you go. So I'm going to take, now I'm, I don't really want to use anything too much. I'm going to get a little dip, touch of black. So I'm just going to use one of these cards again. This is just regular black acrylic paint. Can be any brand you want. You could use um, ink, just be aware that the air drying clay is a bit porous and it could bleed out a little bit. I don't want to use it at full strength, so I'm going to put a little drop of water on there just for me to mix it in with. Right, let's, let me change over my glasses because I'm of that age where I need to wear uh, close-up glasses. So there you go, let's get that water down a bit. Now, I'm going to be painting this here, but looking through... Um, the iPad, so it's probably not going to be as accurate as I'd like it to be, but I think you can forgive me on this one. Actually, that's not a bad job, really. Now, rule of thumb, if you can use it on paper, you can use it on air dry clay, with the exception, as I said, of um, heat embossing. You can't heat emboss. So there you go. I've just painted the little black eyes on that. Focus on it for me. Hopefully it'll focus on it. I won't know until I look at the video afterwards. So that's it. I then sit this to one side just for a little while longer to dry. Um, I always put my paint brushes into a bit of water the moment I use them. Same as my glue brushes because if you don't you'll forget them and they'll be solid the next time you use them. Now we're going to come in with some of the fine litter. I think there's some green on there and I'm just making a little mound of it in the middle here Give it a bit of a shake so it actually flattens out. Now, the wings have actually dried at this point. It doesn't take long, as I said, but what I need to do now, if the next bit really you're not comfortable doing it, then put a rubber glove on. I tend to use the back of my hand for a glue palette, but you don't have to. So I'm going to take some of my PVA glue. I'm going to put it on my hand here. And I'm going to smear it out so it's a thinnish coat. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to take my wings and I just want to tap them on there because I don't want glue down inside. I want to make sure it's just a thin coat just so that glue and glitter just sticks to the upper reaches of the wings. So let's do that with each of these. There you go. Um, 
I don't do this with any other glue, I only do it with PVA, although I do believe there are other glues that would work equally as well with this process. I just happen to use PVA high, um, high tack glue because it's always in my workshop because I use it for so many different things. Now what it's doing this process is it's just taking the intensity down a bit of that green and also having a little bit of glitter on them actually means that they look a little more delicate and a little more lifelike. So let's take that and get rid of the glitter back into there because as I said before I can be a bit of a klutz and I do tend to drop things so let's get this way out of the way before we start. Now you did see earlier on I, I showed you this brand in uh, Enchanted Golden Embossing Powder. The effect you get with that would be this. Okay, so you can change the colours up. I've done some really dramatic effects using black embossing powders as well. So just play around a bit and see what you want. Let me just get rid of this off my hand or it's all you're going to be fixated on for the rest of this video. So just a quick rub. There you go, all gone, no damage done. Now, so we have our wings and we have our bodies. Just want to put them all in order now. It's worth at this point saying that the bigger wings are the front wings of a dragonfly and the smaller wings are the back wings of a dragonfly. So if I then take my dragonfly body, that's the way it would sit in, in the wings. Okay, now let's take a little bit of my dragonfly. So here we go. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use florist tape. Now, florist tape usually comes in a roll. This just happens to be the brand that I've got in the workshop at the moment because I make flowers as well. It comes in a full width. You can buy it in half, and I believe you can buy it in quarter width. If you can only get this, take some off and cut it with the scissors. And then what you end up with is you end up with, I've got quarter width. I'm using quarter width because I don't want too much bulk in my dragonflies because it makes the stem of the dragonfly really quite... Um, hefty should we say. Now hopefully these are dried enough for me to handle them. I'm going to hold them gently at the base there and I'm going to give them a 90 degree fold or bend. I'm doing that because what I would need to do is I need to tuck the wings under the body of the dragonfly. Hi guys, sorry for that. Um, for some reason my iPad decided it didn't want to record anymore, so I'm jumping back in. I'll try and review it to make sure I've got a reasonably good transition so I haven't missed anything. So I think I just described to you that you actually need to give your florist tape a bit of a stretch just to make sure that it's um, released the glues or the waxes. So I'm going to pick up my dragonfly body, which is totally dry now, and I'm going to put the florist tape around and give it a bit of a twist and that should adhere it to it and I'm going to slide it all the way up to the top. Now as far as the wings go we need to put the back wings on first. That's the smaller wings so I'm going to come in I'm going to put one on and I'm going to wrap around just to secure it. I'm then going to put the other wing on behind it, wrap it around just secure to secure it. Now don't get hung up on the fact that the wings are going to move all over the place as you do in this. They will. Okay? I'm then going to take my larger wing and the larger wing will sit in front of the other one but it'll still be underneath it. As you can see, again I'm going to do, where's that tape? Wrap it around, see it moves, don't worry about the movement, deal with it afterwards. Again, put the last wing in Make sure it's nice and snug up underneath there. There you go. And then I'm going to take again my florist tape, wrap it around. Again, don't worry about the wings. And then I'm going to twist the wires, uh, sorry, spin the wires and stretch the tape down all of the stem as I go. Now, as I said before, I'm trying not to have too much bulk which I won't have because I've got five wires now, which is more than an adequate support for this. There you go. Now I think that's a bit long for me. I'm just gonna snip that bit off there. So when it comes to the top, then I'm gonna look at my dragonfly. I'm gonna make the big wings slightly forward and the little wings slightly back. Because this is air drying clay and it's fully dried, 
you can manipulate things. So if I was to stick that into um, an arrangement, that would look absolutely lovely. So let's put this in with the others and show you what they look like in different variations. So here you go, let's put him in over here, or her, let's not be sexist about this. In you go, my little lovely. So as you can see, I can make them in any different color I want, any different way I want. You could go to town with these, you could do the whole body glittered. You could leave, as you can see on this one here, I did the body green, but I left the wings white. Here, I just did an absolute white one all over the place. If you've got something delicate for a wedding or something. But these would be great slotted into a bouquet. They could be made into a little pin or a brooch. They could put it into a hat. They could be any craft product uh, project. If you do want to take these and put them onto your um, paper goods and not wire them, then just do the individual elements and glue them together. So hopefully you like that little tutorial from me, guys. That's how I made my dragonflies. I made them using my Dragonfly mold from KTC Designs, part of the Creative Cake system, although don't be fooled, it's not just for cake. Um, social media links are, as I've stated before, ignore the glue. Um, so these are my social media links. I obviously do craft and I do cake. That's my Etsy store. And this is who I am, and I'm signing off. That's Kerry the Crafter, C-E-R-I, the Crafter. See you next time, guys.